everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the top 10 battery tips to help you get the most out of your battery on your Android device. But before we get started, this video is brought to you by the Amazon App Store and Amazon Coins. Amazon Coins brings you to a new level of savings on games and entertainment using your favorite Android phone, Android tablet, or Kindle device. By going to Amazon.com underground and installing the Amazon App Store, you can save up to 10% on Amazon Coins, which you can use to purchase your favorite games and get the most out of your in-app purchases. Be sure to check out the Amazon App Store and their weekly deals and savings using Amazon Coins. The first one has to do with screen brightness. Now screen brightness, depending on which version of Android you have, this is actually Android Nougat Beta 5 right now, and the battery's been pretty good. But if you wanna save some battery life, you can turn your screen brightness down. And you can see right here, we can just turn it down or up. But the other thing we can do is have it intelligently actually do it by itself. And that's something that you get in Android 5 or newer. So if I go in here and then we scroll down, we go to a display, we can intelligently have it turn the brightness up and down using adaptive brightness. This will usually save you some battery life and help you out. Speaking of the display, turn off ambient display if you want to save a little bit extra battery, although this doesn't use very much. Moving back to the screen, one of the other things you can do is remove widgets you don't use a lot. Widgets generally tend to pull data and actually use battery life to gather that data. So if there's a widget you don't want or don't use, tap and hold and remove it off the screen. That should save you some life right there. And the more you have, the more battery you're actually going to use. So if you're not using them, just get rid of them. Now Android has pretty good battery management, especially with Nougat. But if we go into settings and then we go down to battery and I just charged this, so we're not going to see a ton of information here, but you'll see we're at 93%, approximately 13 hours left. In here, this will show what's using the most battery. Now, you may wanna go in here to see what applications might be using a lot of battery that you don't use a lot. And you can find that out as they build down here. Over time, it will show you what applications are using it. And if it's an application you don't use a lot or hardly at all, you may wanna consider uninstalling it to stop using all that battery. Facebook has been known to use a lot of battery in the past, and I recommended the app Paper. They've since discontinued that, but that's an example where there might be an alternative also that might get you a little bit better battery life over time. The fourth thing we're going to talk about is applications running in the background. Now, the belief has long been held that you should close those applications regularly. However, with the latest versions of Android, especially M and N or Marshmallow and Nougat, you really shouldn't be doing that according to Google. If you go into your app switcher here, you'll see all these different applications sitting here. You can hit clear all and clear all of them away, but this actually might use more battery when you go to reopen those applications. So if it's something you use frequently, you may not want to keep closing it because you'll have to actually reopen it and use more processor cycles to actually get back to where you were originally. So according to Google, and actually Apple also says this for iPhone users, uh, stop closing the background apps unless it's something like navigation that's going to continually use your your actual device's battery. Stop closing them. The fifth thing we'll talk about has to do with your GPS and location data. Location data uses a lot of power, and that's because most of the time it has to actually turn on your GPS antenna and figure out where you're at. So using Google Now for different appointments, telling you where you need to go, when, and how far you are from them, that uses your location to determine most of that information or some of that information. What we need to do is if we're in a battery situation where we need to conserve battery power, we need to actually turn that off or change its setting. So right now you'll see I'm on high accuracy mode in location. This is just normal settings under personal. And here you'll see I have Google app, the Play Services, Project Fi, and the Weather Channel using my location data. We can change the mode from high accuracy to battery saving or device only. And the difference is high accuracy uses GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular networks all at once to determine your location. Battery saving gets rid of the GPS antenna, which uses the most amount of power, or device only uses just the GPS to determine it. So we can go into battery savings or best case scenario for saving battery is just turn it off altogether. So if you can do that, you're out and about and you really need to conserve battery, 
flip that off and you should save a good amount. Now the next thing has to do with notifications. Notifications are one of the great things about Android, but notifications coming in consistently can take up a lot of power. So again, in settings, if we scroll up or down here to notifications, we can see what's using notifications. It's going to take just a moment here. We can go into the settings and we just have a couple different things. Nothing really crazy here. And right now it says, there we go. It loaded all of them. And these are all the apps that can send me notifications. Now, the quick thing we can do is actually turn on do not disturb. Do not disturb can help block some of those if your phone is turned off. We can turn them off individually. So if we go to say Amazon Music and we can block all and we can do this individually or basically let one override do not disturb. Notifications will pull data and, and talk to your cellular or data networks to get that data. So you may wanna consider turning that off to actually help a little bit with, with your battery if it's getting bad. Now, if your signal becomes a problem and you have really low signal, you've got no Wi-Fi in the area, a real simple thing to do is just throw your phone into airplane mode. You can do that, just hit the airplane mode button and wherever it is in your menus, depending on which version of Android you have, throw it into airplane mode. It'll shut off all your networks and antennas and that will actually save you a ton of battery power. So maybe you're working somewhere, you don't need access, you don't need to make any calls or you're not expecting any calls or no one needs to get a hold of you in an emergency situation turn it on and you'll save some power. I personally couldn't do that because maybe someone needs to get a hold of me family wise. But if you have that luxury or you need to flip it on airplane mode and save a bunch of power. The next thing we can do is actually change the screen timeout. Now for these videos, I need to keep the screen on. So I change this quite a bit. So if I go into the settings and then go to display under display, we have sleep and sleep right now is after 30 minutes. But if I change that to 15 seconds, like I do normally, it's going to save me a good amount of power and I'm not going to have a lot of screen on time when I'm not using the device. So it, it's a great idea to just flip it to 15 seconds. Uh, and as long as you don't need it to stay on in front of you, that's a great way to save some battery as well. Now let's go back home. And the next thing we can do, actually, let's go back to settings is for notifications or haptic feedback, we can turn off the vibration motor. And the reason we'd wanna do that is because every time you type or text or depending on which device you have and how you have it configured, it's actually going to make some noise or vibrate and that uses power to drive that motor that makes the vibration. Now to get to vibration and shut it off, we go to languages and input. And then under languages and input, we go to our keyboard and go to virtual keyboard select the keyboard we're using, whichever one that is. And then under preferences, we go to preferences and here you'll see vibrate on key press. So we can turn that off if we don't want it. We can also change the actual strength from small to great. So depending on how you have that set, you're going to use more or less battery depending on what you're using. Now let's go back home. And the final thing we have is to turn on battery save mode. So let's go back to preferences and our battery we have this great mode, especially in Android M and N battery, we have battery saver. So battery saver really improves battery life, especially when you have issues where you're really low. So you'll see it says here, battery saver turns off automatically when your device is charging. And it also says to help improve battery life, battery saver reduces your device's performance and limits vibration, location services, most background data, and so on. Basically, a lot of the things we talked about, it does on its own, but also degrades performance. So you may not wanna do that unless you really need to. So those are the top 10 battery tips I've found that I think should help you out best as possible with your Android device. This is my Nexus 6P and it's been really great on battery, especially with Android Nougat and even with the beta, it's been really good. So the final version should be maybe even a little bit better. But if you have any other tips that rank a little bit higher, maybe I didn't even mention them, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.